So far, we have looked at the factors that control the development of nerves in the embryo. Dr. Ron Meyer's studies concentrate on the optic nerve in adult animals. My research is aimed at trying to understand how axons in adult animals respond to nerve injury. And we study uh, two animals. Uh, one is the goldfish and the other one is the mouse. We study the goldfish because it has a remarkable property. It has the capacity to regrow nerve connections that are severed. What is done experimentally is to sever the optic nerve. The part that leads to the brain then dies because it's separated from its source of nutrition. The part that's still attached to the eye lives on because it's still attached to the cell body which resides in the retina. These severed axons form new growth processes at the point where they're cut. And these ends with their filipodial arms, which look very much like the growth cones that are seen in developing axons, regrow back into the brain and reform a very precise set of connections. The very precise nature of these connections can be measured with exquisite detail. By carefully positioning an electrode in the optic tectum of the fish's brain, it's possible to record from individual optic nerve fibers and correlate their signals with specific points in the fish's visual field. And then, as regeneration occurs, determine the pattern in which the nerve fibers reconnect to the brain. Basically, what we find is that given enough time, and this is on the order of a few months, those connections are almost as good as a normal animal. How does a nerve fiber in an adult animal do this? Do they use the same kind of cues that a fiber which is growing in an embryo might use? Ron Meyer came to the conclusion that regenerating fibers in an adult goldfish use two of the same cues that developing fibers use to establish an appropriate set of connections to the brain. One of those cues is a local chemical address system. Fibers have the capacity, as they're growing, to read the local cellular environment and then navigate according to cues that the growth cone sees. And they've done a number of experiments to show that is what is used by regenerating fibers in the adult as well. For example, when they tried to make fibers grow from a wrong place, the fibers recognize this wrong place and alter their course so they get back to the right place. This gives them a rough ballpark set of appropriate connections. The second cue that fibers use is an activity-dependent fine-tuning process. It turns out that even in the dark, there is a continuous barrage of activity that is propagated from the retina back into the brain. And it's an orderly activity such that local regions of the retina tend to fire at the same time. There's a slight tendency for them to do this and the fibers can recognize this tendency to fire, that they fire at the same time, and recognize who their neighbors ought to be, and they adjust their connections so that those fibers that are firing together come to be grouped into one spot, and that gives you a very precise local order. So the first cue of this chemical navigation gives you a ballpark or global order while the second cue fine-tunes this order to give you a precise local order. Well, we also work on the mouse. And mouse is very different than a goldfish. A mouse is like us and other mammals. When the optic nerve is damaged in the mouse, it doesn't regenerate. And after a while, the cells eventually die. This is rather similar to the case of spinal cord injury, where the nerves that come down from the cerebral cortex into the spinal cord also are unable to regenerate once they're severed. Now, recently, however, we have found that we can take pieces of the retina out of the mouse 
and put them into a culture dish and keep them alive. And under certain circumstances, we find that these pieces of retina are able to grow new nerve connections. We see growing axons coming out of these little pieces of retina. So what that tells us is that the nerves have the capacity to grow, but there's something about being inside of the animal, inside of the central nervous system, that is preventing these nerve fibers from growing. And more recently, what we've found is that when we damage the nerve, these nerve fibers begin to synthesize a protein called growth-associated protein, which is normally found only in, during embryonic growth. So it's like these fibers are really trying to grow. They have all of the machinery for growing, but there's something that interferes with that growth. Now, we think that if we can get them to grow from the work that we've done in the goldfish, that they would know where to go because the cues that seem to be there are very in the adult brain in goldfish and presumably also in mouse are very stable cues so we would anticipate that once we can get them if we can get them to grow then they would automatically grow to the right place in the brain and form uh, an appropriate set of connections to mediate uh, visual behavior again both, the chromosomes, having undergone replication, now split longitudinally in half to form two new cells, each with an identical set of 46 chromosomes. These